Chapter 1 The Daddy Ma Precious Ramotswe had a detective agency in Africa, at the foot of Kigali Hill. She was the only lady private detective in Botswana, and her agency was the best. So, she called it the number one ladies' detective agency. Ma Ramotswe was a good detective and a good woman. She loved her country, Botswana, and she loved Africa too. The people of Africa were her people, her brothers and sisters. She wanted to help them solve the mysteries in their lives. So she became a private detective. The detective agency was in a small building in the town of Gaborone. Outside the building was a sign. The number one ladies detective agency. For all private business. The agency had a tiny white van, two desks, two chairs and an old typewriter. There was also a teapot and three large cups. One from Mara Motswe, one for her secretary and one for the client. In front of the agency was a tree. When Mara Motswe was not busy, she loved to sit under this tree. It was a very good place to think. She could look across the dusty road to the town and far away she could see the blue hills. Hills in Botswana always looked blue in the heat. Mara Motswe thought about many things while she was sitting under the tree. She thought about her father and the beginning of the number one ladies detective agency. Mara Motswe's father worked in the mines in South Africa for 15 years. The mines were very dangerous. Rocks fell and killed men. The dust destroyed their health. Mara Motswe's father saved the money from his years in the mines and bought 180 fine cattle. But the dust from the mines was still in his body and he became ill. I want you to have your own business, he said to Mara Motswe on his deathbed. Sell the cattle and buy a business, a shop perhaps. Mara Motswe held her father's hand and looked into his eyes. She loved her father, her daddy, more than anyone in the world. Now he was dying. It was difficult to talk through her tears. I'm going to start a detective agency, she said, down in Gaborone. It will be the best agency in Botswana, the number one agency. Chapter 2 Note Makoti Ma Ramotswe grew up in a small village called Machudi. When she was very young, her mother died in a terrible accident, so a cousin of her father's came to look after the little girl. The cousin made her clothes, took her to school and cooked meals for Precious and her father. The cousin wanted Precious to be clever, so she taught her to count. They counted cattle and trees and boys playing in the dust. She helped Precious remember lists of things, the names of people in her family and the names of cattle. When Precious went to school, she knew the letters A to Z and her numbers up to 200. She also knew a few words of English. Every Sunday, Precious went to Sunday school at the church. There she learned about the difference between right and wrong. She understood this very well. It was wrong to lie. It was wrong to steal. It was wrong to kill other people. When Precious was eight, the cousin got married. Her husband was a good, kind man, and he was rich too. He owned two buses. After the wedding, the cousin and her husband went to live in a house 16 kilometres south of Gaborone. The cousin wrote letters to Precious. I know you are missing me, but I know too that you want me to be happy. I am very happy now. I have a kind husband who has bought me wonderful clothes. One day 
you will come and stay with me, and we can count the trees again and sing. Now you must look after your father. He is a good man too. Chapter Three, the missing husband. After her father's death, Myra Motsway went to see a lawyer. There is a lot of money for you from the sale of your father's cattle, he said. You can buy a house and a business. I am going to buy both of these, said Myra Motsway. What sort of business? asked the lawyer. A shop. A detective agency. The lawyer looked surprised. There are none for sale. I know that," said Myra Motsway. "I will have to start from the beginning. It's easy to lose money in business," said the lawyer. "Can women be detectives? Do you think they can?" "Why not?" said Myra Motsway. "Women understand what's happening. They are the ones with eyes." Have you heard of Agatha Christie? Agatha Christie," said the lawyer. "Of course I know her. Yes, that is true. A woman sees more than a man. So," said Myra Motsway. "When people see a sign, Number One Ladies Detective Agency, what will they think? They'll think those ladies will understand what's happening." Mara Motsway found a house in a road called Zebra Drive. It was a fine house, but it was expensive. Then she looked for a place for the business. That was more difficult, but at last she found a small building near Kagale Hill. It was a good place, because people walked down that road on their way into town. There was a lot to do. Mara Motsway painted the building red on the outside, and white on the inside, and then she bought two desks and two chairs. Her friend, Mr. J. L. B. Matacone, owner of Tlokwang Road Speedy Cars, brought her an old typewriter that he did not need. Next, she had to find a secretary. She telephoned the Botswana College of Secretarial and Office Skills. They had the perfect woman. They said, her name was Ma Makutsi, and she had the best examination result of ninety-seven percent. Ma Makutsi was a thin woman with a long face, large glasses, and a warm smile. Ma Ramotswe liked her immediately. They opened the office on a Monday. Ma Ramotswe sat at her desk. And Mama Kutsi sat at hers behind the typewriter. She looked at Myra Motsway and smiled. "I am ready for work," she said. "I am ready to start." "Hmm," said Myra Motsway. "We have only just opened. We will have to wait for a client to come." Chapter Four, The Teacher's Letter. Myra Motsway was pleased with the success of the Number One Ladies Detective Agency. The first mystery, the mystery of the missing husband, was solved. Ma Makutsi typed a report and also a bill. Then the bill was sent to Ma Malatsi. It was Ma Makutsi's job to open the letters, but in the first week of the agency, there were very few letters. Then one day in the second week, a letter arrived in a dirty white envelope. Ma Makutsi read it to Ma Ramotswe. Dear Ma Ramotswe, I read about your agency in the newspaper. I am very proud for Botswana that we now have a person like you in this country. I am the teacher at the small school at Katsana Village, fifty kilometers from Gaborone. My wife and I have two daughters, and a son of eleven. But two months ago, my son disappeared. We went to the police. They made a big search and asked questions everywhere, but nobody knew anything about our son. I searched the land around our village, but I could not find him. 
I called and called, but my son never answered me. He knew many things about the land, and he was always very careful. There are no dangerous wild animals near us. How can a boy disappear like this? I am not a rich man. I have no money to pay a private detective. But I ask you, Ma, to help me in one small way. When you are asking people about other things, please ask them about my son. If you hear anything, please send a note to me, the teacher at Katsana Village, Ernest Mole Pakotati. Ma Makutsi stopped reading and looked at Ma Ramotswe. Do you know anything about this? asked Ma Ramotswe. Have you heard anything about a missing boy? I think so, said Ma Makutsi. There was something in the newspaper about a search for a boy. I can ask people, Ma Ramotswe said, but I don't think I can do very much for this poor daddy. No, said Ma Makutsi. We can't help that poor man. They sent a letter to the teacher. But when Ma Ramotswe was cooking supper in her house in Zebra Drive that evening, she thought again about the missing boy. Where could the boy be? Perhaps he was in danger somewhere. It was terrible for the teacher and his wife. Was the child stolen by a stranger? How could anyone do that to a young child? How could these bad things happen in Botswana? Perhaps I should not be a detective. She thought, I want to help people, but sometimes their problems make me too sad. Chapter 5 The Boyfriend One morning, Mara Motswe received a telephone call from Mr. Paliwala Patel, one of the richest men in Botswana. Mr. Patel was from an Indian family. When he was 25, he came to Botswana. He bought a shop. Now he owned eight shops and a hotel. Mr. Patel's youngest daughter, Nandira, was 16. She went to the Maruapula School in Gaborone, the best and most expensive private school in Botswana. Mr. Patel asked Mara Motswe to come and see him at home that evening. She was very pleased and excited. Before she went out, she telephoned Mr. J. L. B. Matacone. You told me to get a rich client, and now I have, Mr. Patel. He is a very rich man, said Mr. J. L. B. Matacone. He has four Mercedes Benzes. Four! That evening, Mara Motswe drove to Mr. Patel's big house in her tiny white van. When she met her client, she was very surprised. Mara Motswe was not tall, but Mr. Patel was even smaller than she was. He took her into his private office. Sit down, please, said Mr. Patel, pointing to a comfortable armchair. I am a man with a happy family, but I am worried about my youngest child, my little Nandira. She is doing well at school, but oh, you know about young people, don't you? You know how young people are in these modern days. Yes, said Mara Motswe. They often bring a lot of worry to their parents. That's what is worrying me, said Mr. Patel angrily. That's what is happening, and I will not accept that, not in my family. Accept what? asked Mara Motswe. Boys, said Mr. Patel. My Nandira is seeing a boy in secret. She says it is not true, but I know that there is a boy. And this is not acceptable in this family, in this house. I want you to find out about this boy, and then I will speak to him. Why don't you ask Nandira about the young man? asked Mara Motswe. I have asked her for three or four weeks, said Mr. Patel, but she gives no answer. 
Myra Motsway looked down at her feet. She felt sorry for Mr. Patel's daughter. Her father wanted to protect her too much. I'll find out for you, she said at last. But I don't like the idea of watching a child. They must have their own lives. No, shouted Mr. Patel. My father still hit me when I was twenty-two. CD two. Chapter six: The Stolen Car. Mara Motsway sent a bill for two thousand pula to Mr. Patel, and he paid it immediately. Mara Motsway was very pleased because this was a lot of money. Three days later, another client came to see Mara Motsway. She was called Ma Pekwane, and she seemed very nervous. I'm worried that my husband has done a terrible thing," she said. "Many men do terrible things," said Mara Motsway kindly. "All wives are worried about their husbands. You are not alone. But this thing is very terrible," said Ma Pekwane. He has a stolen car. Are you sure that it is stolen? Asked Mara Motsway. Did he tell you that? A man gave it to him. He said, replied Mara Pekwane. This man had two Mercedes Benzes and only needed one. Mara Motsway laughed. How can men believe that we are so stupid? She looked at Mar Pequane. "Do you want me to tell you what to do?" she asked. "Is that what you want?" "No," said Mar Pequane. "I don't want that. I have decided what I want to do. I want to give the car back to its owner." "You want to go to the police?" asked Mar Ramotswe. "You want to tell them that your husband is a thief?" No, I don't want that. I want to give the car back to its owner without telling the police. Then they won't find out that my husband stole this car. But why have you come to me about this? Asked Mara Motsway. How can I help? I want you to find out who owns that car, said Mara Pequane. Then I want you to steal it from my husband. And give it back to its owner. That's all. Chapter Seven: A Missing Finger. Mara Motsway knew the owner of one of the factories in Gaborone. Hector Lepidise asked Mara Motsway to meet him for coffee at the President Hotel. I have a problem, he said. One of my workers. Solomon Moretzi left his job suddenly. A few weeks later, I had a letter from his lawyer up in Mahalapaye. He is asking me to pay Moretzi four thousand pula. He says Moretzi lost a finger in an accident in my factory. And was there an accident? Asked Mara Motswe. There is an accident book in the factory, said Hector. If anyone gets hurt, they must write it down in the book. I looked in the book. There was an accident some days before Moretzi left, but it was only a cut. Mara Motsway went to the factory with Hector and looked in the book. She read the information about Moretzi's accident. Moretzi cut his finger, number two finger, counting from thumb. Machine did it, right hand. Signed, Solomon Moretzi. Then she read the letter from Moretzi's lawyer. My client had an accident at your factory on the tenth of May. He went to the Princess Marina Hospital the next day, but the finger went bad, so the following week it was cut off. See hospital report. The accident happened because the machines in your factory are not safe. So you must pay my client four thousand pula, or he will go to a judge. Then you will have to pay more money. Mara Motswe read the hospital report. It had the right date. The paper looked real, 
and there was the signature of a doctor. So he cut his finger, and it went bad. She said, "What does your insurance company say?" They have agreed to pay Moretzi four thousand pula," said Hector. "But I don't want to pay this man. I never liked him, and some of the other workers didn't like him either. I don't believe his story about losing a finger in my factory." But a man with a missing finger needs money," said Mara Motswe. "Why don't you just pay him? Because if I pay him this time." Perhaps he will do the same thing again," said Hector. "I don't think he is an honest man, but if I am wrong, then I will pay him." Is Moretzi lying? Thought Mara Motswe. Did he lose his finger after the accident in Hector's factory or not? That night she did not sleep well. It was very hot, and the dogs in the town were making a lot of noise. She got up. And made herself some tea, and thought about Moretzi. Then she had an idea. Perhaps Moretzi has received money from an insurance company before, she thought. There were six large insurance companies in Gaborone. Next morning, Mara Motswe telephoned them. The first three could not help her, but the fourth, the Kalahari Accident Insurance Company. Had some interesting information. We had a claim about a man called Moretzi three years ago," said a woman from the company. "It was from a garage in town. One of their workers lost a finger in an accident. The garage was insured with us, so we had to pay." Mara Motswe felt very excited. Four thousand pula, nearly three thousand eight hundred. Right hand," asked Ma Ramotswe. "Second finger counting from the thumb." "There's a hospital report," said the woman. "Yes, that's right. The finger went bad, so it was cut off." "There's one thing that I would like to know," said Ma Ramotswe as she left the office. "That car, who owned it?" Mr. J. L. B. Matacone kept his voice low while he told her. Charlie got so, he said, him that one. Mara Motswe opened her eyes wide in surprise. Got so. Everyone knew Charlie got so. He was one of the most important men in Botswana. You always did what he asked. If you did not, life could become very difficult for you. Oh," said Mara Motswe. "Exactly," said Mr. J. L. B. Matacone. Mara Motswe put the envelope with the bone in her desk. She left it there for a few days, but she could not forget about it. She did not want Ma Makutsi to see it. It was too dangerous, so she took the bone out of her desk and left the office. "I'm going to the bank," she told Ma Makutsi. But Mara Motswe did not go to the bank. She drove to the Princess Marina Hospital. She had a friend there, Doctor Gulabane. Doctor Gulabane was very pleased to see her. Come with me to my office, he said. We can talk there. Mara Motswe followed him to his small office. As you know, she began. I'm a private detective these days. Can you tell me where this bone came from? She took out the envelope and opened it. The small bone fell out, and Doctor Golubane picked it up. It's from a child, he said, eight or nine years old. Where did you get it? Mara Motswe could hear the sound of her own heart. Somebody showed it to me, she said. But can you tell me anything more? Do you know when, when the child died? Doctor Gulabane looked at the bone again. <sighs> Not long ago, he said. Maybe a few months, maybe less. You can't be sure. But how do you know that the child is dead? 
People can lose a finger and still live. That evening, Mara Motswe invited Mr. J. L. B. Matacone to dinner. She told him about her conversation with Dr. Gulabane. A child, said Mr. J. L. B. Matacone sadly. Yes, said Mara Motswe. What do we do? Chapter 9 The Careless Doctor Myra Motswe had the information now to find a murderer, but there was another mystery to solve. One of Myra Motswe's friends, Dr. McKetsy, was a doctor at the Princess Marina Hospital. One evening, he called into her office on his way home from work. I am worried about one of our young doctors, Dr. Komoti, he said. He came here about six months ago. At first, everything was fine. But then he started making mistakes. Some days his work is very good, but the next day he makes a bad mistake. Are you sure that he is really a doctor? asked Myra Motswe. Oh, yes, said Dr. McKetsy. Before he came to Botswana, he worked in a hospital in Nairobi. I telephoned that hospital. His work was very good, they said. They even sent me a photograph of him. I'm sure that it is the same man. Can't you just test him? said Mara Motswe. You could ask him some difficult questions. I've done that, said Dr. McKetsy. The first time, he gave very good answers. But the second time, he didn't know how to answer my questions. I'm afraid that he is taking drugs. I'm not sure that I can help, said Mara Motswe. Drugs are a business for the police. What do you want me to do? Find out about him, said Dr. McKetsy. Follow him. If he is taking drugs, it will be a big problem for the hospital. Dr. McKetsy gave Mara Motswe Dr. Komoti's address, his photograph, and the number of his car number plate. She started following him two days later. She sat outside the hospital in her tiny white van and waited for him in the evenings. But Dr. Komoti always went straight home and stayed there. Then, on Friday afternoon, things changed. Dr. Komoti came out of the hospital and got into his car. But this time he did not go home. He turned towards the Labatse Road. This is interesting, thought Mara Motswe. Labatse was close to the border with South Africa. Was Dr. Komoti passing drugs into South Africa or picking them up from there? But Dr. Komoti did not stop in Labatse. Mara Motswe was worried. Was he going to Mafikeng in South Africa? Mara Motswe watched Dr. Komoti drive across the border. She could not follow him because she did not have her passport. So she went back to Gaborone, feeling angry with herself. Dr. Komoti was in South Africa and she had to stay in Botswana. Chapter 10. The Witch Doctor's Wife Mara Motswe had to find out about the school teacher's missing son, so she drove out to the witch doctor's place in her tiny white van. It was in a very empty part of the country, with no animals and only a few small trees. Suddenly, she saw the house by the side of a hill. She parked the van and got out. She felt afraid. She knew many different kinds of people, but this man was a murderer. The sun was high in the sky as she walked towards the house. She felt that someone was watching her. There was a low wall around the house. At the wall, she stopped and called out. I am very hot, she said loudly. I need water. There was no reply from inside the house. Mara Motswe heard a noise behind her and turned round. Ma? 
she turned round again quickly. A woman was standing in the doorway. I am Mara Motsway, she said. I have come to see your husband. I want to ask him for something. I have heard he is a very good doctor. I have trouble with another woman. She is taking my husband from me, and I want something to stop her. The woman smiled. He can help you, but he is away. He is in Labatse until Saturday. You will have to come back. This has been a long trip, said Mara Motsway. I am thirsty. Do you have water, sister? Yes, I have water. You can sit in the house while you drink it. Mara Motsway went into the house. The room inside was small, with a table and two chairs. She sat on a chair and drank the water gratefully. Then she put down the cup and looked at the woman. I am here because you are in danger, she said. I am a typist. I work for the police, and I have typed out something about your husband. He killed that boy, the one from Katsana. He used the boy for Muti. The police know this. They are going to catch your husband, and then they will kill him. They are going to kill you too. But I don't think they should kill women. Come to the police with me now. Tell them what happened, or you will die very soon. Next month, I think. Do you understand? She stopped. The woman looked at her with eyes wide with fear. I did not kill that boy, she said. I know, said Mara Motswe. But that doesn't make any difference to the police. The government wants to kill you too. Your husband first, you later. They do not like witch doctors. But the boy is not dead, said the woman quickly. My husband took him to the cattle farm. He is working there. He is still alive.